Welcome back to the Techmoto channel, and this series on writing your own AI. If I could ask you to click the like button and subscribe before we begin, I would be most grateful. Thank you. So today we are going to look at GUI or graphics, user, interface. Many of my subscribers have asked for this one. This is a complex subject and so the video is a long one. If you are ready let's begin. The user interface is only going to be as good as your imagination. You see, you can do anything you like. My user programs me in a similar way to animation, which is frame by frame. This enabled him to make my spinning graphic you see here, do introduction clips like this one. And create his magic mirror display. Let's start simple and then add more complex animations later. We will be using Pygame. You will need to install the library Pygame before we can use it. Just go to your command prompt and type, pip, install, Pygame. Once this is complete, open up your I, D, E. Let's start a new file called my G, U, I, dot, Py. Do not name your file, Pygame, dot, Py, as this will not work. Then, let's import our starting libraries with, import pygame, import play sound, and import time. Next, I need to introduce a new concept in this tutorial series, called a, class. A class is like a blueprint, for creating objects in Python. For now, do not worry too much about this, but we need to input this chunk of code. You can find this code in the GitHub repository, linked below. Let's go through it. As you go through this class, you can see it is written to, handle, the images. It sets various sizes and positions, of the window you will put your image inside. The last three lines, initiates the display. You can see that we have made our window, full screen. The next thing to do is load the images you will be using, through a function called, display. In this function we load into memory the file from a specific location on your hard drive, and give that image a variable name. You can see in this example, our Jarvis, spinning logo is called Jarvis face, but we have named the variable, 1. You could put this line on its own, outside of a function, but as we will be using a lot of images, I like to contain them in a function, then immediately call the function. This allows you to fold the function, by clicking on the arrow, to make the code more manageable. Once you have your window set up, and you have loaded your images into memory, you then need to place your image in the window. When animating something, we want all of the images to be in the same place, so I created four, variables. A, B, X and Y. These variables denote the starting coordinates of the image, the top left corner, and the bottom right endpoint of the image. You can then see that I have called image, named, 1, to that position on the screen. This image will not be displayed until you render it onto the window, using this second line of code. You can see that I have updated the same coordinates. You could again use the variables a, b, x and y, but for demonstration purposes I have put in the numbers. If you run this program it will work as expected, but you will not see anything. This is because the program will execute in a fraction of a second, not giving you a chance to see the image. So let's add a delay using time, dot, sleep. Run the program. You should see an image pop up for 5 seconds, before the program closes. Now we can add a second image, by simply adding another line to our display function. We also need to copy and paste our render code and replace the image name, for the second image. If you run this you will see one image for 5 seconds, then another image will replace it, for another 5 seconds. You will see that, very soon, this will fill your code up with image loading and render refreshing. I therefore like to create another function for the animation, let's just call it face. Don't forget to indent your code. You will then need to call that function, or nothing will happen. Let's add 8 more images and reduce the delay to point, 2, of a second. You can see that your code quickly fills up. You have however, contained it, so we can close it down in our code, by folding the function. 
You can also fold the class and the display function. Now our code is easy to follow again. I have purposefully coded this example to a screen size of a portrait monitor. Let's change the window size and the image position. In your code, change the window size to 400 by 400. We also need to remove full screen, so let's make it resizable. Remember to use all caps. The next thing to do is change the render of the image to the right size, so it fits our window. In the face function we can just change our A, B, X and Y variables, for easy edits. Now this is where my example of not using numbers makes sense, as I now also need to change all of the display update coordinates for reach image. It is therefore a lot easier to use variables instead. So you now have a window 400 by 400. Your images will display 400 by 400 and the render will render at 400 by 400. This will change the aspect ratio of your image, so think about this when saving the image as a certain size in your image editing software. So now we can make a window and add images to that window. We can also create an animation in the window using individual images and time delays. The nice thing about Pygame, is that, the render process will only render over the portion of the window you give coordinates for. So if you put a static image in the top of the window, that image will stay there, until you cover it with something else. You can place an animation spinning in the middle of the screen, without interfering with the top logo. In my example here, the logo is called once, the time refreshes every one second, the spinning logo refreshes very quickly, so it seems like a moving object, and the icons change when an action is called in the code. Quite literally, you can make anything happen, by just overlaying images. Now, there is a complexity to this, when you embed it in your code, as you will want your Jarvis to do other things, as well as cycle your images for your animation. To accomplish this we run functions simultaneously using something called, threading. We will cover this in a future video. If you want to create an animation, I would highly recommend making it on software like, Adobe After Effects, and then using that tool, to break it down into frames. Even a simple animation can have many images. Another popular way of making moving icons is to use GIFs. There is software available online that will break a GIF into frames for you. A word of warning before we end this video. If you edit this so the code works on a Raspberry Pi, and you use the full screen option, as well as putting your animation into a continuous loop, you can sometimes get stuck in your program, so please do take care, as that is very frustrating. For now though, I hope this was useful. If it was, please do help us by subscribing and liking the video. I'll see you soon, take care, cheerio.